Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, on behalf of Mark and Alice and myself, and the Bible Talk team, we want to greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we continue on in our search for Christianity. Um, We started this program a long time ago, a long time ago, (laughs) and we're looking out at the church around to see if, if, it, if it resembles what the Lord says in his word it should look like. Mm-hmm. And from there, we looked at what our lives, let a man examine himself, what our, our lives should look like to reflect the redemptive work of Christ in our lives, of God the Father's gift in our life. And we concluded that in our last program. So we're going to start something a little bit new in this program today which should be a series that lasts a few weeks anyhow. So before we do that, and I, I pray that it's going to bless you. Amen. Before we do that, I'm going to ask Brother Mark if you'll ask God's blessing on our time together. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I just thank you for your word. Yes, Lord. And just bless it to our minds and our hearts so we can spread it to your world. Amen. And Father, once again, I just pray. I just ask that nothing comes out of my mouth that you have not put in my heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen, amen, amen. So what we're going to talk about now, I I need a little violin music here, I think. I thought you were going to have a drum roll. (laughs) No, this is violin. We're going to talk about the well-dressed Christian. This is about fashion, don't you know? Okay. So let's start at the beginning. Because the beginning is always a good and logical place to begin. The beginning, Genesis, Bereshith, in the beginning. I want to read by, start by reading from the third chapter of Genesis. Genesis 3, starting at verse 6. Okay. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate. And she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. Well, you know, they'd been naked all along with no self-consciousness, no self-awareness of that fact, apparently. Right? Prior to sinning, there was no attitude of self, no focus on self. Okay? That's where the garment industry started. Well, it, it is leaves. because um, they sewed fig leaves together. This is the first effort to clothe oneself. Right. And that's the key f- factor here. They clothed themselves. themselves. Okay? Right. So it goes on in, in the eighth verse, starting at the eighth verse, moving right along in Genesis here. It says, They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord, of the Lord God, among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Now, he wasn't afraid because he was naked, because he had been naked prior to this. Right. All right? You know what? It says in Proverbs 14, 34, that that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Mm -hmm. Okay? They had cause to be afraid because of the disgrace, because of the shame. shame. Immediately, a truth that would be spoken by the Lord to and through the prophet Samuel was made manifest here. Right? In 1 Samuel 16, 7, and I'm sure most of you know this verse. It says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For God sees not as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at his heart. Okay? You cannot cover sin up. You can't do anything to hide your sin from the eyes of the Lord. You have to turn to him and trust him to hide his face from your sin. Just like David did, right? 
Mm. Remember David? This is a, a, a powerful, powerful verse here. In Psalm 51, verses 9 and 10, David said, Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Psalm 51, verses 9 and 10, right? Mm-hmm. Adam and the woman's attempt to hide from the Lord in the garden and cover themselves, that led to the first foreshadowing of God's plan for removing sin and restoring a right relationship with him. Do you understand the foreshadowing? It's like something that, that is a, it's a, a prophecy through action, okay? It's like a parallel. Well, it's a foreshadow. It tells us something to come, okay? Mm-hmm. Because um, when they... When they were covering their own sin, Mm -hmm. when they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves, all right? Leaning on their own understanding. Their own works. Yeah. They were trying to hide their sin by covering it with their own covering garments. Right. Okay? They sewed fig leaves together and made for themselves loin coverings. Mm -hmm. However, what they made, what they accomplished on their own, Mm -hmm. Men then, as now, cannot hide sin from God. Yeah. So, God spoke, Genesis 3.21, moving along here in Genesis, mm-hmm. and he said, The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. So they had made their own garments, but now God makes, they made garments out of fig leaves, right? But now the Lord makes garments for them out of Animal skin. So there had to something had to die. Well, that's exactly blood. exactly the point. Yeah. In order to obtain the skin for those garments, one or more animals had to shed blood and die. Right, blood had right? to be shed. So this is the first time now. Okay, right. for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood by reason of the life that makes atonement. Leviticus 17, 11. Mm-hmm. So it takes, in order to cover the sin, that, that didn't cover, no. the, 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 the skins that God made to cover them did not cover their sin. No. I mean, there's, there's, it didn't erase, erase or take away their sin mm-hmm. because they were still cast out of the garden. Yes. Right? Right. And they still died because they were separated from God. But, it was a foreshadowing, a foretelling, a living prophecy of the fact that in order for our sins to be covered, it would require blood, the shedding of blood, and require death. Okay? Animal sacrifice cannot and did not remove the sin. Right? They're still kicked out of the garden, like I said. All right? And that's true death, by the way. Separation from God is death. But this action shows that God himself would fix the problem. Right? So all of that said, it becomes evident from that point on that clothing has been important in the world. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. After the Hebrews wandered about in the wilderness for 40 years, the Lord would say, this is from Deuteronomy 29, verse 5, I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you, mm-hmm. and your sandal has not worn out on your foot. Mm-hmm. God kept them from their clothes from wearing out. 40 years wandering around in the desert. That's a harsh environment. And yet, God kept their clothing from wearing out. How's that doing today? You know, um, I was a consultant in New York City many, 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 many years ago. And I had the opportunity on a number of occasions to do special consulting up in the garment industry, in the garment area of New York, up on the west side, the upper midtown west side. And it's amazing how much of that is controlled by Jewish people, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even know if there's a fur industry anymore, but at the time, that was basically all Orthodox Jews that ran that. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I, I just find it fascinating that it should go from God saying to them, I'll take care of your clothes, don't you worry about clothes. And now... They're taking care of the clothes. Yeah. I looked at a recent study from last year, 2016, and it... From the, from the fashion industry, all right, and this is one that is shared among all fashion companies, it said that here in the United States of America, 
the value of the fashion market, ready, was three hundred and eighty five point seven billion dollars. Now that same study <laughs> put the worldwide fashion industry at three trillion dollars. Oh, goodness. That's insane. That that is insane, okay? Yikes. Let's talk about for a moment the, the robes of righteousness. It's insane when you consider how many people are homeless and naked. That's right. Yeah. And how many people are hungry. Okay, but I'm not gonna go there, all right. In Isaiah sixty one I'm going to read from verse 10. I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has wrapped me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. God clothed Adam and the woman in the garden. More importantly, God has clothed us, who the redeemed of the Lord, who have accepted that free gift of salvation from Him. Okay. The garments of salvation. The garments of salvation. Those are the robes of righteousness, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so here's where I want to start. And this is, please try and follow along with this. I, I make sure this is not too complicated. The prophet, God spoke to the prophet Zephaniah. I will read from verse, chapter 1 and verse 7 and 8 in Zephaniah. It says, Be silent before the Lord, for the day of the Lord is near. For the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his gifts. Then it will come about on the day that the Lord sacrificed it, I will punish mm. the princes, mm. the king's sons, and all who clothe themselves with foreign garments. Mm. Now, the Young's literal translation, instead of saying, instead of saying foreign garments, says strange clothing. And that was Zephaniah. Zephaniah one. I read verses seven and eight. Okay. okay. There is no clothing more foreign. There is no clothing more strange to a disciple of the Lord, to a follower, to a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Than grave clothes, mm. the wrappings of death. Mm. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." Christianity. Uh, well, I was going to say Christianity is about life. That's true. But following Christ is life. Okay. So let me just talk a minute about, and, and some of you may have heard me talk about this before. I'm going to talk about the empty tomb. Yes. Right, so you know about the, the empty tomb, mm -hmm. which was not at all empty, by the way. Mm -hmm. The tomb of Jesus Christ was not empty. Now, this is a very, very significant fact. It's an important fact. And it, it's, it's so overlooked by most Christians. As I was saying, when Mary Magdalene went after being at the tomb and saw that the tomb, Jesus was not in the tomb, she runs back and she tells Peter and John that the tomb, Jesus is not in the tomb, right? right. right. So then it says, the two, Peter and John, were running together and the other disciple, that's where it says, the two are running, the other disciple, that's John, ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first. And stooping and looking in, he saw the linen, linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And so Simon Peter also came following him and entered the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the face cloth which would had been on his head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. So when they got there, the tomb, Jesus isn't there, right. no doubt, hallelujah, but the tomb's not empty. What's there? The grave clothes are there. The resurrected Savior came forth from the tomb, leaving the grave clothes behind. Amen. 
Yes. On the other hand, Lazarus, Lazarus. Yes. kind of a, a kind of us, right? Mm -hmm. A human, okay, a normal human. When Jesus went to see him, or went to when he had been buried, he's dead four days and in the tomb, right? Jesus gave thanks to the Father, standing outside the tomb of Lazarus. And it says, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. Jesus said, unbind him and let him go. John eleven forty three and 44. Mm -hmm. Lazarus, this new man, came into new life. He came forth still wearing the clothes of the old man, the dead man. The old habits, the old traditions, the old ways of thinking. So he, again like us, would have to be transformed by the renewing of his mind. He would have to be unbound and set free, which is exactly what Jesus said, right? right. Unbind him and let him go. He would have to change what he was wearing. Yes. Yes. Right? He's taking the, the grave clothes off. He's got to put something else on. It was required that he change his clothing. So do we. Right. So let's get back to the basics with this foundational truth before we go any further. Mm -hmm. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm going to read starting in verse 12. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. The things of God are spiritually appraised. We need to consider that, particularly as we're doing this study about mm -hmm. the clothing, right? right? Our new wardrobe. Way back when, when God was bringing his people out of Egypt, that's the world, and into the promised land, by the word, he commanded that, and I'm going to read from Leviticus 19.19, 19. he said, you are to keep my statutes, you shall not breed together two kinds of your cattle. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed, nor wear a garment upon you of two kinds of material mixed together. Mm. You cannot mix the old with the new. Like I mean, the you know, skin. like the wine skins. You mm -hmm. can't put new wine in old skins, all right? right. And, and Jesus said this in, in Luke 5, 36, it said, and he was also telling them a parable. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise, he will both tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. Okay? Mm -hmm. you're, going to, you're going to put on new garments, okay? It's got to be totally new. If you do, then whatever you're doing, if you, if you mix the two together, mm -hmm. will tear apart and look ridiculous. The things of God don't mix with the things of the world. I mean, there's a, how many examples can you think of? No man can serve two masters, right? And Jesus said that in the Sermon on the Mount. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. This truly is binary, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes. It is either one or the other. It is cut and dry. Uh, you know, don't take my word for this. I mean, I'll give you an example. James, James 4, uh, verse 4. He said, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. It's powerful, strong words. So, you need to make sure, you've got to be certain that you dress holy. you got to dress holy, okay? How do you do that? That's what he told us that he wanted us to be, to be holy. Be holy, even as he is holy, right? right? So, Paul wrote in Romans 13, 14, and he said, 
but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lust. Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to wear? Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's clearly more important, far more important, than being in a suit or jeans or a dress or, you know, you can fill in the blank, put in whatever you want. What's more important is that we are led by the Spirit, appraising things spiritually and properly clothed. So it's written in a dozen, it's written dozens and dozens of times in the New Testament that we are to be in Christ. Right. It's not a matter of being in a suit or in jeans or in work clothes or in a uniform. It's a matter of being in Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got, I mean, you have got, if you don't understand that, I mean, if you don't understand what it means to be in Christ, take time and pray. Talk to him about it. Because I can't overstate the importance of this. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he thinks it's important. The Lord thinks it's important because he says it over and over and over in his word, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to learn to dress for success. Mm -hmm. When Jesus came out of the wilderness after the temptation, right? Mm -hmm. He started teaching in the synagogues. In the synagogue in Nazareth, he made it clear that Isaiah's prophecy was pointing to him. Right. Right? Isaiah 61. And you know, I, I, I pray that you know what Jesus said, but I want to read the whole passage from Isaiah. It says, Isaiah 61, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners. To proclaim the favorable Lord of the day, the favorable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness, so they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. That's the first three verses of Isaiah 61. Mm -hmm. We were designed, fearfully and wonderfully made that we are, right? We were designed to praise God. Yes. It says in Isaiah 43, 21, it says, The people whom I form for myself will declare my praise. Yes. We need to dress for the occasion. So make sure that you are wearing the garment of praise mm -hmm. instead of a spirit of heaviness. Amen. Okay. Because the Lord not only has his eye on the sparrow, as the old hymn says, he's watching you. He's watching me. There was a, a Danish writer in the uh, 1800s. You may have heard of Hans Christian Andersen. Mm, yes. okay. uh, he was noted for his fairy tales, which have been translated into over a hundred languages. One of his most famous, published in 1837, was The Emperor's New Clothes. Oh, right. Right? Yes. Now, the plot of this story, and I can remember that my father read this to me back in the 1940s. Yeah. Yes, I am that old. And it's, it's about a vain ruler who loved to wear and show off in the newest and fanciest clothes. So he hired tailors to make him the finest suit of clothes in the land. The tailors tell him that they've made the best suit ever out of cloth so fine that it is invisible to anyone who is hopelessly stupid. <laughs> so receiving the suit, which he cannot see, he can't see it, right? Mm -hmm. his, his ministers, they put it on him, and he admits, he, you know, he has to admit that he can't see it, but he won't, he won't admit that he can't he see it. Yeah. He can't, because he's already been told. It's, you know, only the stupid can't see it, right? So he puts it on with the assistance of his ministers, who also can't see it, and can't admit that fact to him. Right. Right? So this emperor then proceeds to go before his subjects who are cowered by the fear of his power and they sing the praises of the emperor's new clothes mm. until a young boy in the crowd hollers out. You see, he didn't understand the need right. to lie. <laughs> he didn't understand that. Yeah. So he hollers out and exposes the emperor's hypocrisy that the emperor, exalted man that he was, was naked. 
Whatever Anderson's tale was intended to reveal about people, about power, about human nature, what I see is the spiritual truth that while he was naked, people refused to see the truth. You see what you want to see, all right? Or you have eyes and you can't see. The truth is that the majority of mankind is dressed in their costumes and few indeed are ready to proclaim to them that they're naked. That's exactly what Jesus did when he was speaking to the church at Laodicea. He said to this church who had proclaimed they were rich and had need of nothing, he said, because, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. I'll spew you out of my mouth. I'll vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Mm. Revelation 3, 16 and 17. There are so many, too many verses to go over here now with the time we have left that speak of what we're supposed to be wearing. It'd be worth your while to take and, you know, just get in a Bible with a concordance and look at all of these things. Let me, this can be one to, to kind of leave you with. In Ephesians 4.23, because we're going to go back to Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4.23, it says, And that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, mm -hmm. which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Put on the new self. The new self. Put it on. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, we're, I, we're going to get into this more next week because this is really, really important. And I haven't begun mm. to get to the really important part. But, Father, I just thank you, Lord God, Jesus. that your spirit can speak to us. Mm. And, Lord, that you do clothe us in robes of righteousness, Lord God, that we might stand before you, not naked and ashamed, but the very righteousness of your Son, Christ Jesus, Father, because of your gift to us. Lord, help us to, to appraise this spiritually, to see things spiritually, that we might be pleasing to you. Well, hallelujah. Till next time, God bless you and goodbye. I will